After me was Dennis Prager. He opens the floor up to Q&A. It was a savage bloodbath, okay? Prager is a well-honed conservative blade when it comes to debate. This dude's like 95 years old. He's been debating for a long time, and these kids just don't stand a chance. Every time a, every time a girl stands up to ask a question, <laughs> By the time she sits down, she's crying. <laughs> Organizer lady comes back up to me and she's like, hey, I really think you should go up and ask a question because like, this is like, <laughs> it's completely derailed at this point. Um, students are starting to text their parents. I get up in the back to ask a question. I was like, hey, Dennis Prager, um, what's up? Like, um, <clears throat> I got invited to Pepperdine University to give uh, a speech to kids. And they wanted to be interactive. That was their goal. Like, make it something engaging, which is good for me because that's obviously that's what I excel at. I'd rather do like a 10 minute speech and a 50 minute Q&A rather than um, like a 50 minute speech because f that. Um, so I've decided to, um, I, if you've noticed, my like change in political focus has been like building bridges or being empathetic or more understanding. Um, and that's more or less kind of what my, I think what my speech was about. I think I wrote notes for my phone, but I don't think I have them anymore. But yeah, it's basically like, hey, you should be empathetic understanding towards other people, like blah, blah, blah. Um, I think I, I think I did a good, um, I think I did a pretty good presentation. The kids seemed really happy. I did like a huge, it was like a 45 minute Q&A. Um, because of like the, because of the quality of kids that they had for the event, they were all like super engaged. So they came out, lots of questions, lots of engagement, it was super fun. Could tell that the audience was definitely like, it was definitely like the college, like Zoomer kid, woke kids, very much so. Um, but I think I did a good job at like representing my brand of politics and what I thought we should aspire to. My whole goal was like, we should be able to listen to people that we miss or that we, that we um, have different views of, be able to understand them, and then we can like bridge divides and, and communicate that way. So after me was Dennis Prager. <laughs> and um, apparently Prager is like friends with people that are administrators in the university, I guess, or something. And that's why he like gets invited to do this. And supposedly, I'm just repeating what I've been told because I don't know this 100%, but supposedly whenever Prager goes to do these speeches, it's usually like a pretty bog standard conservative speech. Like he goes to the school, he talks about this is why it's important to grow up and be good and have conservative values and have a family and all that, blah, blah, blah. Apparently he says shit like that, I guess, typically. But I guess this time he decided to go with like the most contentious, politically charged topics possible. <laughs> and so he gets up and he starts talking. Um, before he speaks to, I hear through the organizers, God bless them, um, I don't know if I was supposed to hear this, but apparently he's very difficult to work with, like demands a big speech stipend, um, needs a podium to speak, very particular about the setup and everything. I thought it was funny, but whatever. I, I guess it's easel. He's earned it, whatever. Um, so he decides to get up and do his speech. Um, did he hear my speech? I don't think he cared. Um, I was sitting in the back back at this point because I wanted to come in and listen to him talk. So I'm curious what he'd have to say to a bunch of high schoolers. And he opens with how ridiculous the treatment of the coronavirus has been and how the whole world went crazy. And he gets into this like um, not a single doctor or not a single um, teacher in Sweden died and they had the best response and they did absolutely nothing. And wearing masks like deprives you of oxygen. He, 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 one of the examples he gives like, you think when your pilot is flying you from LA to New York, you think they're going to wear a mask the whole time, rebreathing their own air? Um, and he, you know, he went off on some wild, dumb shit, uh, but, you know, whatever. He, you know, he said his stupid shit. I think at some point I asked, um, because one of the organizer lady was walking by and she saw, I kind of had my head in my hands because it was just painful to listen to. And I asked her, I was like, are we allowed to ask questions or is it just for the kids? You're like, oh no, like, you know, just for the kids to engage. I was like, okay, just check them, you know, because <laughs> it was triggering the fuck out of me. But from that, uh, he goes on next to, he goes on next to talk about how the real racists are the only people that ever bring up race because there is no race. There is no systemic racism in America. And the only people that have ever brought up and obsessed about race so much were the same Nazis that killed my family. And I was like, wow, he's really just, he's really just going to the most hardcore conservative topics he can in front of an audience of like 17 year old zoomers. Okay. I think like 40% of these people are like black and Hispanic and Asian students. Um, 
interesting. That, okay, bold choice. Um, and, he, you know, he runs down that line of speech for 15, 20 minutes about how woke people are destroying the country and just like, yeah, he, the, the coronavirus is horrible, wokeness is horrible, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, interesting. And then he opens the floor up. <laughs> he opens the floor up to Q&A. And it's, I'm going to be honest, it was a savage bloodbath, okay? Prager has a well-honed conservative blade when it comes to debate. This dude's like 95 years old. He's been debating for a long time, and these kids just don't stand a chance. So you get these like poor, these poor 17-year-old black girls, right? There were three or four or five of them that were all sitting together, I remember, because they asked me questions on my thing. And they would get up, and they would obviously start asking questions about systemic racism, but he had like all of the standard conservative arguments to shut them down. It's like, well, don't you think? And he's like, show me one conservative law in the United States. Do you, can you name a single one? And um, the girl is like stuttering. And uh, I, at one point, a guy over here was like, hey, stop interrupting her. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. Is she an idiot? Are you her speaker now? And he's like, do you want him to be your speaker? <laughs> and every time, a, every time a girl stands up to ask a question, by the time she sits down, she's crying. <laughs> and I'm just like, and the audience is turning, okay? They were already mad by the end of his speech. Like you could hear every time he said some like pretty contentious thing, there was like murmurs in the crowd. And um, you're getting these like, these 17 year old kids are getting like traumatized by Prager, who's just like fucking in barbarian mode. <laughs> I guess he just decided like, I wanna see how many fifth graders I can beat the shit out of today. And he just starts going in on these kids. And um, eventually it gets to the point to where the, um, the one of the organizers comes up and he's like, hey, um, do you wanna ask a question? Because like obviously shit is getting fucked. And um, I was like, I, you know, I would, but I don't want to be like an ambusher or I feel bad. Like, I don't want to be underhanded. I don't know if it's my time to say something. And um, so after like five more minutes of like the, the, the warrior fighting back and forth, the um, organizer lady comes back up to me and she's like, hey, I really think you should go up and ask a question because like this is like <laughs> it's completely derailed at this point. Um, students are starting to text their parents. <laughs> and I'm just like, holy shit. Um, it was funny because like, this is probably the most, it's, it's very random, but, um, I get up in the back to ask a question. It's probably the most applause I've ever got in my entire life, which is really funny. Cause obviously like the whole crowd was mind fucked. Um, they hear the mic in the back and the lady's like, Oh, I think Steven over here has a question for her. And all the kids are like, yeah. And I was like, Oh my God. And it was, um, it was a very, very sorry moment for me. <laughs> what a thrill. Um, but I'm happy that I'm actually, I'm super happy that I got to ask a question because I was able to like bookend my speech perfectly with a question to him. Uh, it was so good because I got to illustrate like two or three different like points that I'd made in, in my speech by asking him a question. Um, like I remember my speech, I was talking about like, it's really important to not attack people. It's important to come to a shared understanding of descriptive reality. And it's important to ask the right questions because sometimes people could be misleading. Um, so when I got up, um, oh God, hold on, just backing up two seconds. I remember like one of the girls was like, don't you think that there is like systemic injustice in like our, uh, in like our prison system? Uh, like, why do you think so many minorities go to jail? And Prager was like, minorities go to jail because minorities commit the most crime. <laughs> it was just like, I was like, oh my God, he's just, he's going hard. Um, but I got to stand up and I think I probably took like 30 seconds, but I was like, hey, Dennis Prager, um, what's up? Like, um, <clears throat> I think I agree with you when you say things like minorities commit the most crime and, you know, they've got troubles with poverty. I think we all agree on this, but I think the interesting question isn't, you know, um, are minorities committing the most crime or are they in the poorest areas? I think the interesting question is why? And if you don't think that there's something intrinsic to some minority group, like are they intrinsically worse than white people? Are they intrinsically worse off? Are they genetically worse off? Like if that's not the case, doesn't it seem fair to say that there is some policy on the books at some point in time that was probably affecting, you know, uh, their lives and their outcomes? I remember Mr. Prager at the beginning of your speech, you said that the family unit was the most important thing um, in order to ensure the success of a child. Well, don't you think not allowing people to buy houses because in 1960 they couldn't because they would write no Negroes allowed. Don't you think that these types of policies made it hard for them? It was like it was a really well thought out, really good question. Blah blah blah. I got to ask my thing. Everybody was super happy. Um, he tried to answer it, but he did the thing where he like he started dancing around it, and then people got really mad, and then they had to then they cut his mic and he and, he, and they made him leave the property. Um. Oh my God! It was. 
it was so dramatic. Um, it was like it was like the most dramatic event I've ever been at in my entire life. Um, was this filmed? So I mean, it's an auditorium full of maybe two hundred high school kids. I imagine somebody's gotta have filmed something. Um, the lady said that she said that her husband filmed it, but I don't know like what they can release or not release because um, I mean, like it's high school kids, you know. I I don't know if I'd be pretty scared probably in terms of just like pushing shit like that on the internet. Um, but yeah, it was like, it was easily the, it was like the most dramatic thing I've ever been out of my entire life. It was crazy. But um, I thought it was cute because after I did my little thing, there were like, I remember like the, the same group of like, it was like four or five black girls came up like, oh, um, thank you. It was like so nice for you to ask a question. Like, it's really cool that people like you, you know, can give a voice to us. And I was like, you know, um, Okay, cool. I was I was like super. It was really nice. All the kids were super super nice to me. Made me feel happy. Um, she the organizer lady invited me back up to speak again at the end to kind of like bookend. I guess like the from the beginning of my original speech. Um, and I thought uh, I thought it was really cute. I was really touched. She sent me like a text. Apparently, you're allowed to like write letters to your favorite speakers for the event. And I think I have like probably like twenty letters that she texted me of like kids that wrote that um they were thankful for me speaking at the event, which I thought was like really cute. I thought that was touching. Um there were two other speakers from the NSA from the National Speakers Association that were there as well that also spoke. They seemed to like me a lot too, which was cool. Maybe I'm building out connections with them. We're like trading emails now, which is fine. I don't know like what other events they do. Apparently the NSA is a pretty prestigious um speaking association I, I don't i don't know anything about it or anything like that but um yeah i do remember one of the guys was like oh like um uh like who are you on social media like like what's your twitter and i'm like oh you know i'm kind of a different kind of guy on twitter i don't know if um i don't know if i should uh <laughs> i don't know if you want that he's like oh no no i understand i'm crazy on twitter too and i was like oh okay there's like the speaker the organizer lady and then another guy organizer was there and i end up telling him and i was like i don't remember the last thing i tweeted was <laughs> And um, he's like, oh, okay. And he, he finds me and he adds me while I'm talking to him. And I glance over and I see on his phone, it's that fucking picture of fucking Shaggy. And it's the one, the caption is like, I don't know. When I get on Twitter, like the spirit of mental illness enters my body and I just turn into a demon or whatever. And I was like, okay, well, hopefully, you know, it's a good joke, I guess. Um, but, you know, uh, maybe uh, maybe he understood or maybe it was too memey for him to understand. And he just thought it was a uh, whatever. But, um, man, what a, uh, what an event. Do you remember your other questions to Prager? It was just the one, and then he left after. What do you think about the sub calling the kids pathetic for getting upset about this? Do you think somebody was getting worked up or something that's unreasonable weird? Um, I don't think they should have been as upset. I tried to stress that when I spoke afterwards, that like, hey, this is probably a good experience. Like you should be able to like, you know, interface with people that are challenging to you and everything. Um, but the, um, um, did anyone know a lot about you before the speech? I don't know if any of them were fans of me. I don't think so. Or there might've been one or two. But in general, I don't think many knew who I was. But these were really young kids, right? They're 17, so it's probably significantly under the age of my normal audience. Um, yeah. What was I going to say? Why did you post My Little Pony on your Twitter? What? You were saying it was probably a good experience for them. Um, yeah. Oh. <coughs> oh, I remember now. Um, oh, the question was um, whether or not they should have been that upset. There is... Um, I don't remember what it was. There's some speech that Jordan Peterson gives where I don't remember if watched this on stream or not, but he says that like if like a nine a nine month old is never wrong. Like if a nine month old is crying, you have to do what it wants. You can't really argue with it. Um, I kind of feel the same way about like high schoolers. Like if I'm in front of an audience of high school kids and I'm like screaming at them, then I've probably fucked up. Like I'm a 33 year old adult. If I'm talking to 17 year olds and we're in a screaming match, then something has gone very wrong on my end. So I kind of, I kind of, I'm not very sympathetic to Prager. Like he knew that he was treading into controversial waters. He probably should have been 
a little bit careful about like being so provocative and he was so provocative oh my god i couldn't believe when that when that girl i i even i knew it was coming before it was coming i could tell as soon as he opened it I'm like oh god he's not gonna say it. he is gonna say it. he i know he's gonna say it as soon as she's like what do you think about like the fact that more black people are arrested for crime or isn't the criminal justice system isn't that and he's like that's more minorities are in jail because minorities commit the most crimes like damn he really just fucking dropped it he just dropped the bomb right there um which could be fun in certain audiences, but damn, these kids are like 17 years old, man. Like, well, Jesus. Yeah, I don't know. Um, the um, next, what was the next thing? Did Super Mad get unbanned? Oh my God, does RTVA know? Do you think you have a bridge or opportunity to pregnant now? I have no idea. Apparently they asked him earlier if he wanted to do conversations or debates with anybody else there, and he said fuck. Or no, he didn't say fuck nobody. He said absolutely not. Um, yeah. I'll give you another interesting thing that people don't reflect on. We ache to have them on our shows. We ache to debate them, but they won't debate us, and they won't come on our shows, and they won't us have us on their shows. I had like five people in high school that had heard of you before I even mentioned you. Your influence is crazy, dude. Yeah, obviously. I'm huge. Especially with a kid. <laughs> Never mind. Um, that's a different person entirely. Oh. Uh, what else was I going to say? Um, the Minds event was frustrating. Um, fuck, I'm so irritated. It was hard to... It was... Here's something that I'm actually so disappointed in myself, and I wonder if it's why I'm sick right now. Do you remember, I, I think like two years ago on stream, I think I made a joke where I said like, people who eat healthy seem like they have the weakest bodies because like they eat a little bit of Taco Bell and all of a sudden their like stomachs are exploding. What's up with that? I thought like, if you eat healthy, shouldn't all your shit work better? Um, something that I've noticed is probably for like, especially like the past like three or four months, like my diet has been pretty rigid. My sleep has been pretty rigid, like pretty hardcore. But I've noticed now that when I travel and I fuck with that, I get really fucked up. I feel like I'm less adaptive than I was before. Um, to where like, if I'm on like a really rigid sleep and a really rigid diet schedule, when I travel and fuck that up, it fucks with me a lot. Um, but yeah, I don't know about that. It's, kind of, it's a little irritating. Um, that Minds event was more mentally rigorous than I thought it would be. It was it was hard to hear the speakers, keep track of four different conspiracy theory talking points, um, and maintain my own thoughts and keep track of their arguments while getting booed by the crowd. Um, that was a lot to deal with. Uh, doing it in front of the Jesse Lee Peterson thing was easy because those were easy arguments. Like is the um, is is the United States a uh, you know white supremacist nation or whatever blah blah or is there white whatever shit like that or white lives matter or whatever like I can do that these are like meme arguments but like the keeping track of like the more complicated conspiracy theory shit from so many different people while getting booed at the same time was really fucking irritating. Um, or I'm only irritated because I had one misspeak kind of to where I said people were eating horse paste because Joe Rogan said it was a good idea. I should have said people were eating horse paste because Joe Rogan said taking ivermectin was a good idea. Um, but I think as soon as I heard the audience start to go, I lost the end of that thought and I used a pronoun when I should have used a proper noun. And like, that's the one thing that every fucking retarded conspiracy theorist driven outlet decided to run with after that whole fucking speech. When I've got like actual Tom Clancy to the left of me talking about how all mainstream media is fucked and you can tell because here's a Vox article that says it why are you citing mainstream like again i'll bring you the receipts if you look this up on vox go to vox look up cia fake hepatitis b vaccine program it's all going to come up there for you the cia apologized for it this isn't about left or right for me this is about protecting innocent people that get experimented on and when you talk about disinformation even on the examples of censorship given up here somebody says oh well we won't talk about uh we won't talk about experimentation on minorities with with medical treatments and then you reference a vox article vox is one of the most left-leaning publications in the united states if there's a censorship going on why would they be talking about it or you can look you can look for the new york times the washington post they'll talk about tuskegee there are definitely mistakes that we've made in the united states when it comes to a policy but circling back you know like who am i supposed to trust on one end you've got experts that make mistakes and then on the other hand you've got people that will say things like 
Russia collusion was absolutely fake, but Hillary Clinton was there in Benghazi on the ground killing U.S. soldiers, right? Like, you have, like, murdering Seth Richards, murdering all these people. So, I mean, like, at the end of the day, like... Or like the person to the right, right of me that's talking, or the guy to the left that was making the same trans joke like 15 times. It's like, oh God, it was such a, that was a very irritating panel to be on. Oh my fucking God. Um, Lord, oh yeah, that's the closest I've ever come to burning the Lauren Bridge. When she started tweeting that shit, I was about to fucking lose my mind. I actually had to unplug and take a two hour nap because I was about to go fucking ape shit on Twitter. Um, yeah, he brought up that Tom Clancy thing like four other times. He got so fucking mad when I brought that up, and I'm glad. I think that the truth is, I, I think the truth is far more boring sometimes than we care to admit. I, I think that the truth is we're just not very much interested in what is real or what is true. I think we all kind of have these ongoing political or ethical like narratives that exist in our mind. And I think we like to shop around for opinions or ideas that kind of either reinforce or go against it, depending on what kind of media we're consuming. Um, I've been doing, uh, you know, streaming political stuff for six or seven years now. And, you know, I'll be honest, I could tell everybody, if I do a huge stream where I'm attacking everybody on the left or I'm attacking everybody on the right, I'm going to get a ton of views doing it. If I do a stream where we just read, you know, studies about hydroxychloroquine or metal shavings being found in a couple of vaccines that caused me to get recalled in Japan, that's going to be way less sensational than saying that there were foreign agents found in vials and Japanese vaccines that were withdrawn and never explained about, which they were, you know, people talk about these things. But I think that engaging, engaging with the actual truth of the matter of what's going on is always going to be secondary or subservient to whatever political agenda you have. It's just way more exciting to pretend that we live in a Tom Clancy novel where there's this collaboration going on between all of these governments around the world than the idea that sometimes people mess up, sometimes even experts get things wrong, sometimes your population genuinely disagrees with you, it's not a corporate lobbyist or a shady boogeyman causing the government to do things that you hate, it's actually just your neighbor that you never talk to anymore because you're too busy spending time online than with your neighbors who actually actually has substantive disagreements with you about the way that you run your country. So yeah, I would say that the issue between satire and reality is that reality is something that we never cared for anyway. It's just way easier to avoid it now than it ever has been in the past. But the reason why I was so upset about people pointing out the horse face thing wasn't because like I could have structured the sentence better, but it's I agree with that. But the problem is people were pretending they're mad about horse face, but they're not. They're mad because they all still support ivermectin. Um, that's the, and nobody will admit that, but that was the actual truth of it, but whatever. The Majid combo would be good. Maybe. I tried emailing Sam Harris, actually, um, to see if he wanted to chat. That would be a fun chat. I feel like Sam Harris, I feel like I'm either, I'm either like one or two years like ahead of Sam Harris or behind Sam Harris, depending on how you look at it, because I feel like he had a more mainstream political presence, but it feels like he took the exact same trajectory that I did, except he was either like a year ahead or behind, depending on how you look at it. Because Sam Harris seemed like a guy that thought himself an independent thinker, was relatively left-leaning, became disillusioned by leftist kind of institutions, but then ended up drifting too far to the right and became a useful idiot. But not because he really was like a right-leaning person, but because he just kind of got co-opted into these weird like IDW, the intellectual dark web shit or whatever, and then has since realized it. And he's like, okay, fuck, hold on. Like these guys are actually insane. But I do think just based on what I've seen and which isn't much, I haven't listened to much. I've listened to more Jordan Peterson than Sam Harris. Um, Some of these people are Trump supporters, but many aren't. And they've been taking the Trump team's allegations that the election was stolen through massive voter fraud way too seriously. And they're extending a principle of charity to Trump and to the rest of his team that is frankly delusional. People are saying, well, Sidney Powell is obviously insane. She's a conspiracy theorist and blah, blah, blah. Now, I, I still just don't buy that. I don't buy that this woman is just lighting herself on fire and has gone completely crazy. I suspect that she has some of the evidence that she's talking about. What seems to me to be a more honest explanation or at least a more clear thinking explanation of what's going on here is that there may be reasons that Trump can't have Sidney Powell on the, the legal side of this because she's pursuing other things that seem more related to the voting systems and Dominion and everything else. This is one of these things where everyone pretends they're an expert in all of this. I'm not an expert in all of this, I, but I think I'm a pretty decent uh, explainer of just sort of human nature. Again, there is a needle to thread here, and many people don't appear to even see it. Insofar as I've noticed what others in the so-called intellectual dark web have been saying, it's generally not something I want to be associated with. 
does he end up signing bills that increase the debt and the rest of it? Yeah, because the whole system is, is out of whack. There's no money left, and yet we keep, okay, more stimulus. We have literally no money. We're in so, how much debt are we in right now? Trillions and trillions of dollars, and it's going up. I think we just signed another $2.2 trillion stimulus. It's like, the how number, do we, how do we get out? Well, I hate are we to tell ever going to get out of this? Or is it just you so, yeah. go bankrupt can I, and can can I start whisper, again? Can I whisper how we get out? I mean, it's called war. The, the sad truth is we are, it seems to me that we're in an almost unavoidable conflict with China now. They have so much of our debt that we know we can never pay it back. There's there's nothing like short of like some sci-fi, we, we find a planet somewhere that has unobtainium like in Avatar right. and we mine it and sell it to the Chinese here. Although we would get in a war over who's going to get there first. Like there are debtors and we've got more weapons than our debtors right now. That That's, I mean, talk about a mafia move. It's like, we sort of know, ah, we can keep borrowing from them because we got all the nukes and, you know, they've got some stuff, but, you know, we've got bases everywhere. It's a seriously depressing, like, unpleasant thing to think. They but got it, more people. Can't they just create more well, weapons and have more they money? They got more and... people. I suspect they're probably cloning people, too. That's a oh whole gosh. other thing. I mean, we know we can clone dogs and, crazy. you know, you can Ears clone sheep and we can clone, <laughs> yeah, all that kind of stuff. And it's like, if we can clone dogs right now, which we, you, there's commercial cloning of dogs happening right now. I don't want to single anyone out in particular. But Howard. allow me to take this moment to turn in my imaginary membership card to this imaginary organization. I mean, the IDW was always tongue-in-cheek from my point of view. It was a funny name for a group of people who were willing to discuss difficult topics in public, mostly on podcasts. But it never made sense for us to be grouped together as though we shared a common worldview. I never saw much downside to it, and I didn't much think about it. But in the aftermath of this election, with some members of this fictional group sounding fairly bonkers. I just want to make it clear that I'm not part of any group, right? So if you want to criticize my ideas, that's great. But I only represent myself here, and no one else speaks for me. We have a crisis of legitimacy now on all fronts. People have lost their trust in our institutions. And this is understandable given all that's happened over the last four years. Trust in media has almost collapsed. But that doesn't mean there still isn't a difference between the New York Times and Breitbart, or between journalists who are doing their best to report facts, even while they harbor their own political biases, and political operatives or conspiracy theorists who are obviously spreading lies. So as bad as things are in mainstream media, and don't get me wrong, they're quite bad, you simply can't place equal blame on both sides politically at this moment. And we have a sitting president who is essentially a QAnon conspiracist. So if you find yourself saying things like, all politicians lie, or Biden is just as corrupt as Trump, you have become part of the problem of misinformation in our society. It seems like he like is he has like some like foundational principles that he believes in and he tries to like get his positions from there. He seems to genuinely be like radically opposed to misinformation and stuff. Like he seems to feel very strongly about that. But Yeah. Damn, I feel so bad for It really depresses me what happened to Majid. He used to be the best can COVID broke him. Yeah, maybe. Um, Jordan Peterson is so fucking horrible now. Um, it's so bad because especially now that I have more conservative friends, like I go back and I rewatch some of the early psychology stuff he says. I don't even know if I trust Jordan Peterson on psychology now or like self-help stuff now. Um, everything he says is just so stupid. His brain like actually got broke. I don't know if it was the benzodiazepine stuff or if it's just like all the political inundation or whatever. But um, man, he's like, he's insane now. Um, whereas he used to be like genuinely insightful. Like I think like you could recommend, at least in, in so far as like um, psychology goes, kind of philosophy if you're like have a very open mind and can be resistant nothing politically but um at the very least like psychologically like, he would have some insightful things to say um but yeah oh my god he's just like he's insane now he's just like wild he's off to perk oh my god that video he posted about his twitter ban was on hinge oh yeah well is it criminal <laughs> Well, I don't know. <laughs> well, it's not illegal, is it? <laughs> what do you think, Jordan? I mean... So, was it criminal or not? Were the operations undertaken by the fascist physicians who carried out the Nazi medical experiments legal? Yes, under the laws of the time. But were they criminal? 
I'll leave that question up to you to answer. Jesus Christ. Apology to scalpel. Is that not a true moral hazard? And I'm not taking down that tweet or acknowledging that my tweet violated the Twitter rules. Up yours, woke moralists. We'll see who cancels who. Twitter's a rat hole in the final analysis, and I have probably contributed to that while trying to use, understand, and master that horrible, toxic platform. No doubt I owe some apologies for that, and I'm trying to learn, but it's a relief in some real sense to be banned. And I regard it under the present conditions as a badge of honor. Was your vague posting before you left for Texas about the Prager stuff or something? Wait, what was I vague posting about? It was probably about the Prager stuff. I wish you were on the other panel with the Project Veritas guy, Ben Burgess. Oh, yeah. Um, I heard that was crazy. Wait, did you guys hear what happened with that? Because apparently a lot of stuff was missed on stage. Um, the, um, apparently, I don't know how much of this, if any of this has been talked about publicly, but supposedly, um, O'Keefe tried to ambush Burgess behind stage with some like expose interview or some shit. And, um, oh, they posted on the channel. Okay. Gotcha. But like, supposedly there was a huge uproar backstage before they ever got on stage. And that's why they were like so heated with whatever, everything that was happening. Yeah. Jeez. I, I, I didn't watch, um, I didn't watch the, the debate though. So I can't say, unfortunately, but we're probably gonna watch it on stream. Cause I heard it was really interesting. Oh, he said it on panel. Okay. Um, do you think that people talk like he does to seem smart? Or do you think there's another reason? I feel like people sometimes refuse to talk like a normal person. and would rather use the big and obscure words to make their points. Um, I don't know if Peterson, Peterson's not like as bad about it as like Vosh is. <laughs> Did you ever watch her go over 2,000 meals? Yeah, with Lauren. That that documentary was so bad, even she had to admit that it was fucking dog shit. What a horrible fucking, stupid fucking documentary. <clears throat> um, can you say what happened with Wings event? So... Within weeks of taking office, President this? Trump delivered on his vow to conservatives with a judge from Leo's list, which had grown to include 25 names. Thank you. Today, I'm keeping another promise to the American people by nominating he was so judge successful. Neil Gorsuch. Is this the choice you advised President Trump? I remember having a debate with some fucking random loser at the time who was like a political commentator about like how successful Donald Trump was. Uh, and this liberal, who I don't even know if he's a liberal still, at the time was advocating against it and saying that Donald Trump was not a successful president at all. I wonder who was, um, who was right on that. Why, why even make an illusion to me when you're so fucking stupid? Like, just stick to being like an uneducated frat boy. Like, why not just do that? Like, oh my God, Trump exercised one of the explicit powers to the president that doesn't require any, like, congressional, like, come together or anything. Like, yeah, yes, Trump did do the, one of the things that he was... He also did a lot of executive actions, too. Like, good job. <laughs> Jesus. Um, Glink might be... Might be going crazy a little bit. Apparently, um... I noticed on his channel that... For time... All of the comments are people saying that, like, he's gone crazy. I don't know if it's, like, schizophrenia is, like, starting or something, but, um... Oh, sorry, fuck. Originally, there were different comments here at the top. I'm sorry. I swear this isn't coming from a place of hate, but you got to reevaluate things before everything you've worked so hard for is destroyed. Um, dude, I love you. You got to take it easy on the psychedelics. 
while it was good while it lasted, I'd say that some of us will still be here when you come back down to reality, but I guess it depends on how long it takes. Regardless, thank you for the memories. I feel really sorry for Glink. This was a big mistake. It hurts to see you wasting your potential. Just found out about you taking psychedelics. I swear every YouTuber goes to LA loses their mind. I'm so confused as to why you thought this was going to invest with time, energy, and money. Glink, please don't end up like Connor Murphy. Um, but I went through some of the old comments on his video. Wait, what happened? Well, so I'm about to do some big, um, big who the fuck who asked, okay? Because I, I don't know, but like, um, so I had a huge moderated conversation between Mr. Glink and Max. And Mr. No, not Mr. Glink. I'm sorry. Glink and Max. Glink and Mr. Girl. And um, as part of this conversation, uh, Glink wanted to convince Max that, like, everybody should do psychedelics or that psychedelics would, like, give us insight into how we should live our lives or, like, going forward in the future. It was something like that. It was kind of, it was kind of, yeah, something like that. It was pretty out there. But I figured that, like, Glink said he had a pretty in intense mushroom trip and, you know, Things were going on in his life now. He completely changed his perspective after doing mushrooms and blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, yeah, I've heard, you know, I've had a big drug experience or two myself. Well, sure, I understand this. Um, but by the end of the debate, or the conversation, I should say, it was a debate. By the end of the debate, I asked him, I was just curious, like, damn, like, I'm just curious, like, what kind of trip did you take? And he, um, and he said it was 1.5 grams of mushrooms. And I was like, that's not a life changing amount of mushrooms, my dude. What the fuck? How? And now after seeing like the direction that his like content has taken, and now after seeing his community's response to all of his recent stuff, now I'm kind of wondering if there's like some mental thing that's like setting in or something. Uh, yeah. And that's kind of what I wonder. So then when I go back and I look at some of these trailers, now I'm kind of wondering if is he just like going insane or something? There is a revolution upon us. An unseen movement of artists, creators, and engineers brewing in the shadows, the far corners of the internet. On their own, these individuals are creating great content. But together, these beacons of light can form a wave. And they will blossom into something beautiful, something that can be shown to the world. If only, if only it had a stage. Light wave is that stage. Through the power of the internet, coming to you live through the power of the internet, Boogie, Boogie2988, he's gonna be there. Boogie's gonna be there. Yeah, I don't know. Apparently, when he did this trailer, um, apparently Boogie, Boogie hadn't even heard of this event. I don't think he went. <laughs> like, going to be at Light Wave ATX in uh, Austin, Texas on June 28th? No. I, I, as far as I know, I was never invited. I checked my email. I don't see a, sing a single email from them. They didn't arrange for me to be flown there or to have a room. I... I have no clue who's organizing this. I am confused shitless as to why there's a there's a trailer for the convention and I'm mentioned in it and I don't know I don't know why. What the actual fuck? So somebody just asked me if I was going to be at Light Wave ATX in uh, Austin, Texas. Apparently it wasn't advertised too well. I'm not, I don't, I don't know. She likes to move slow. I ended up, there was a lot of dumb shit that happened with my flights and I ended up not being there on the first day. So I only made the second day, but apparently I didn't miss. Yeah. There you go, yeah, you don't want the HDMI to go fucking crazy. No, man. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, thanks. I guess we're just gonna remember to turn it back on. Okay, so it looks like the audio is going. There you go. So 
somebody made. I don't want to bully. This is like mean to bully. But. There is a revolution upon us. An unseen movement of artists, creators, and engineers. Produce track. What? I don't know what the point of this was, or what was happening. Coming to you live through the power of the internet, Boogie, Boogie2988, he's gonna be there. Boogie's gonna be there. I mean, if I was gonna be on the 8th. Yeah, I don't know, man. It was, um, it was a thing. See the Arizona governor debate meme. Apparently, um, Close my what state? Apparently, some Republican state. They tried to legalize, um, like the consumption of THC stuff, and they didn't realize that that was edibles. Is this true? As I'm reading the like the article headlines, did they accidentally legalize edibles without realizing they were doing it? Minnesota. <laughs> Business deal, but you know what? I didn't listen. I kept it open. You didn't have to listen, people. You didn't have to listen. I <clears throat> the legislature stumbles into legalizing THC for better or for worse. Found out his legislative session in May by partisan battles negotiating the difference between health and human services passed. Uh including one exempting cannabinoids derived from hemp from Schedule 1 of the Controlled Substances Schedule. It pa the amendment passed on unanimous voice vote. <laughs> Here's State Senator Jim Abler, Abler. That doesn't legalize marijuana. We didn't just do that. He chuckled. His DFL co-chair, Representative Tina Liebling, Liebling of Rochester, replied, Oh, are you kidding? Of course you have. No, just kidding. We'll do that next, okay? Well, actually, they did it. As of Friday, July 1st, 2022, products with THC, the chemical that's too high from legally certified hemp, can now be manufactured, distributed, and sold in Minnesota in 5 milligram increment edibles and drinks. <laughs> the Board of Pharmacy employs just 23 people, and they now have their hands full what with dangerous legal opioids and everything else, now they'll be tasked with regulating the potency, packaging, and age requirements of the new THC products, which can be sold almost anywhere. There's no tax provision in the bill either. <laughs> Rip. But yeah, apparently they fucked up. <laughs> Apparently they fucked up really hard. Arabic opening. See that Rossman is starting again on YouTube because he gets no engagement. What do you mean starting again on YouTube? This person seems to actually follow your advice, but it still doesn't seem to go any better than interactions where they said they should just do this. Wait, what? Got the description below. 
parking lot out approached him about an alleged oh fuck well dude i can't i don't have the i don't have the tolerance right now to deal with you fucking morons when it comes to cop shit there are i can't believe how many people in my subreddit were like um there's actually nothing wrong with when a cop pulls over for you to scream out and ask for his name and badge number as soon as he shows up that's actually totally normal and destiny is totally in the wrong okay all right i just i don't whatever you guys want to do i don't care okay i super don't give a fuck you do what you want okay um, let me watch this. Hold on. I'd actually like to ask everybody on this stage if they would agree we had a corrupt stolen election. Raise your hand. That would happen. H.P. 2280. Hold on. Let her finish, please, Scott. Okay. God, they talk over me, and I'm Italian. That shouldn't happen. <laughs> you know I'm what? I'm Irish. Okay. You know what? Why not get high-tech people that are going to be on the machines that are Republicans? A Democrat, Republican, get supervisors, that, that, equal amount. That happens. That, we, we have parties... We, Looking over Th that's election right. results. They're, they're mm -hmm. doing it now. No, no, they, they they're actually it's telling time they to have not. hundreds, two hundred thousand minimum ballots were trafficked by mules. No, well, an honest because, election. May I finish, Mamma Mia. We I feel like state. I'm on an SNL skit here. Are you we going to take it, control of the debate? We are taking. No, 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 Carrie. I don't want I'm you to try to, to take, do it. I know you would be happy okay. to do it. Listen, I haven't been on a stage with this many women since I've been to a baby shower. It's been a while. I, I don't know how that's going to go over, Scott, but we'll let that hang. Um, <laughs> Who is this savage? Oh, my God. What? Do you think Republican voters want a candidate who doesn't even believe in the vote? I don't believe this primary has been fair. I can tell you that. Otherwise, I wouldn't have launched the lawsuit. Our campaign is a movement. We're going to show up and vote in droves. They're going to have to cheat even harder in order to try to win this. Your so campaign's I think a psyop. Uh, pa Paula, is, pa please. First of all, put pa everything... Paula, 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 I feel like what? this is a spoof, please. honestly. Go ahead, finish what you were saying, please. <laughs> oh, God. Is this a spoof, Ted? No, it's not. Finish what are you were sure? Yes, an I am. <laughs> wow, okay. I'm pro-life, from conception to death, and I believe... No exceptions for rape or incest? Well, that's a gray area. I, I don't know. That's a personal decision for a person. <laughs> Wait, did she say she was pro-life and then just become pro-choice in like six, oh, six worded question? <laughs> Why can't we treat human life in the same way that we would treat alien life that, that we discovered how, an alien how would you? There's a reason we don't always- Wait, what is happening? polling at zero percent. No, one percent. this is what happens when- <laughs> Scott, please. I'd never fuck that guy. He's got a two inch dick. Two and a half inches, <laughs> actually. And we know you can't respond to a closing statement. The only kind of drag I've ever dressed in is a business suit or construction work clothes. I've never aspired to be Elvis Presley. <laughs> All right, that's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> what? what is happening? Do they? <laughs> okay. Call a lightning round. January 6th. It was a setup from the beginning. We cannot have uh, actual, um, um, oh gosh. Um, <laughs> see, um, anyway. Uh, what we saw happen on January 6th. Uh, was uh, clearly an attempt to uh, delay the count of the electoral votes. Coronavirus vaccine policy. They knew Fauci had awards for his work in cytokines. Mr. Fauci is one of the most corrupt individuals in Washington, D.C. We are to oppose any vaccines. Everybody ought to get vaccinated, and we need to do everything we can to protect ourselves from future viruses. Wyoming residents' faith in the election process. I understand when I talked to Mike Lindell, he did say that there was a small, small portion of uh, voter fraud in this state, but that is alarming. What about uh, 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 Facebook uh, using the, uh, the, the system to, to, to steer people? Uh, we, we know for a fact all the major internets do that. 
The 2,000 Mules movie is something that I think we have great concern about. Voting machines that, you know, are suspected fraud. There are politicians in this country, beginning with Donald Trump, who have lied to the American people. He consistently has said that the election was stolen when it wasn't. Ukraine. Ukraine is corrupt. We've started it. We got involved. We pushed them into being against uh, uh, the Russian government. Money laundering. I think that's the biggest uh, ticket for Ukraine's <laughs> and the Biden administration. It's the front line. <laughs> okay. What do they even like have to do like any reading or research on anything? I don't even know what is happening. I, I'm going. Okay. All right. It's been fun tonight. What is even what are they even talking about I'm in the battle for freedom? And I think we've got to elect serious leaders, serious leaders. I don't even understand. We're going to go to what we call it. They're just riffing it, dude. Oh my God, what is happening? Is that Photoshop? Is it like a, yeah, it looks fake as fuck. Cause what is, yeah, no, yeah, this is dumb. This is fake as fuck. <clears throat> coming off I'm sorry but the heat is it have you seen that the heat coming off of that rap Jesus Christ what the <laughs> hell <laughs> stop the stop the British we're, we're way too anti-British here right now okay you guys need to you guys need to chill okay <laughs> 